APCO Educational Topic Number 40, Disorders of the Breast. Breast diseases encompass a broad spectrum of pathology from benign breast disease to breast cancer. Breast care often involves a multidisciplinary approach. Obstetrician gynecologists are often the first person that a woman consults for breast-related signs and symptoms. The objectives of this video are to list factors that place individuals at risk for breast disorders, to describe symptoms and physical exam findings of benign or malignant conditions of the breast, to demonstrate the performance of a clinical breast examination, discuss the steps in the evaluation of common breast complaints of nostalgia, mass, nipple discharge, and discuss initial management options for benign and malignant conditions of the breast. Let's start with a review of breast anatomy. Here is the breast, and it is organized into 12 to 20 lobes with glandular or lobular tissues. The lobules have clusters of secretory cells arranged in an alveolar pattern and are surrounded by myoepithelial cells. The glands drain into milk ducts with about 5 to 10 collecting ducts that lead to or drain into the nipple. Typically, breast cancer arises in the glandular or lobular unit of the breast, and there is a disproportionate amount of glandular tissue in the upper outer quadrant of each breast. This is why breast cancer most commonly arises in the upper outer quadrants. In young women, the breast consists predominantly of glandular tissue. With age, the glands involute and are replaced by fat, and this process is accelerated by menopause. The two most common complaints related to breasts are 1. Pain and 2. Concern about a mass. It is important to take a careful history. Let's review some risk factors for breast cancer. Age is the strongest risk factor. A personal history of breast cancer. An inherited genetic mutation such as BRCA1 or BRCA2. High breast tissue density. A first degree relative with breast or ovarian cancer diagnosed at an early age. Early menarche, late menopause. No term pregnancies. First pregnancy after the age of 30 and never having breastfed. A complete breast examination should evaluate both breasts in a systematic fashion, both axilla and the entire chest wall. Various techniques have been described for the palpation of breast tissue, including circles, wedges, and line patterns of examination. The best time to perform a breast examination is ideally in the follicular phase of the menstrual cycle. Let's now discuss diagnostic testing. Mammography is an x-ray technique that is first-line imaging for women older than 40. It is able to detect lesions approximately two years before they become palpable. Mammography can be screening or it can be a diagnostic test which involves additional views. Ultrasound is especially helpful for women younger than 40 and it is useful in evaluating inconclusive mammographic findings. MRI is useful for women who are at extremely high risk of developing breast cancer, for example, BRCA carriers. We will now discuss some common breast complaints starting with nostalgia or breast pain. Nostalgia can be cyclic or non-cyclic. The cyclic pain often involves the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle and the pain is often in the outer quadrants of the breasts. Non-cyclic nostalgia is not associated with the menstrual cycle and it can be associated with medications including antidepressants, antihypertensive drugs, and hormones. It can also be associated with tumors, mastitis, cysts, history of breast surgery, or it can be idiopathic. Extra mammary pain is pain that does not arise from the breast tissues and it can arise from chest wall trauma, rib fractures, shingles, or fibromyalgia. The non-pharmacologic treatments for nostalgia include a tight-fitting bra or sports bra, weight reduction, and regular exercise. The only FDA-approved medication for nostalgia is Danazol, but this medication has significant side effects. Moving now to nipple discharge. It is important to ask the patient if the discharge is spontaneous or expressed, if it's bilateral or unilateral, uniductal or multiductal, and the color, whether it's white, green, yellow, clear, or bloody, and is there a mass present or not. Benign processes cause non-spontaneous, non-bloody, green, yellow, or brown discharge that can be bilateral. Bloody, unilateral nipple discharge would be more concerning for cancer, and the next step would be a breast ductography. Let's now discuss the breast mass. Characteristics of the mass that suggest malignancy are size greater than 2 cm, immobility, having poorly defined margins, firmness, having skin dimpling or color changes, retraction or changes in the nipple, bloody nipple discharge, and ipsilateral lymphadenopathy. If the mass appears suspicious, then the next step will be a biopsy, and this is usually a core needle biopsy. There are three histological categories of benign breast masses. The classifications are based on the degree of cellular proliferation and atypia. 
Non-proliferative masses have a relative risk of developing breast cancer of one. These are fibrocystic changes, fibroadenomas, cysts, fibrosis, and adenosis. The masses that are found to be proliferative without atypia have a relative risk of developing breast cancer of 1.5 to 2. These include epithelial hyperplasia, sclerosing adenosis, complex sclerosing lesions, and papillomas. The third category is proliferative with atypia. If the cells have atypical hyperplasia, the relative risk of developing breast cancer is 3.7 to 5.3. There is atypical ductal hyperplasia, or ADH, and atypical lobular hyperplasia, or ALH. Lobular carcinoma in situ is sometimes classified in the proliferative with atypia category. It is a non-invasive lesion that carries a risk of breast cancer in the ipsilateral or the contralateral breast with a relative risk of 2. Moving now to management. If the core needle biopsy demonstrates atypical ductal hyperplasia, atypical lobular hyperplasia, or lobular carcinoma in situ, then a surgical excision is needed to avoid underestimation of the diagnosis. If the diagnoses are confirmed, then the next steps will be close surveillance, lifestyle and diet changes, and chemo prevention is an option with a selective estrogen receptor modulator. We will conclude by discussing breast cancer. It is the second most common malignancy in women and is the second leading cause of cancer-related death in women. There are three histological cell types of breast cancer, ductal, lobular, and nipple, and 70 to 80 percent of cancers are ductal in origin. Treatment of breast cancer often involves both surgical and medical therapies. Surgical therapy options include lumpectomy and radiation, or mastectomy, and medical therapy options include chemotherapy and hormonal therapies. This concludes the APCO video on breast disorders. We have discussed important risk factors, symptoms, and physical exam findings of benign and malignant conditions of the breast.